Hey there, Bjorkman here from Audio Issues, author of Step by Step Mixing. And as always, I'm here to help you confidently finish your mixes so that you can be proud to release your records. Today, I'm going to answer a question about EQing and got from a uh, subscriber and a student. But before we get into that, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you want my mix translation cheat sheet, make sure you go to mixfinisher.com and download it there. It's my seven step process to help you make your mixes translate to every speaker system you play your mixes through. So I got a question from a student about the difference between the Fab Filter Pro, in this case Pro Q3, because I've up upgraded to Pro Q3, and the Logic Stock EQ. So there, I use both. To be fair, uh, I use I use Fab Filter quite a lot. It's a very very versatile EQ and it's uh, super intuitive and really really great to use. However, as you can see on my mix template here, I have the channel EQ set all over the place, uh, mostly used as filters on buses because I know that I'm gonna want to filter out, for instance, in the drum reverb here. I know I'm gonna to want to filter out some of the lows and some of the highs in the drum reverb. And then this is the mix bus, which has my Pro Q3, which has a 32 Hertz filter in the stereo spectrum, and then a 75 Hertz uh, filter in the sides. So all of the low end signal is summed to the center of, of the stereo spectrum or summed to the mids, uh, summed to the middle that is. However, uh, there is, Definitely quite a lot of difference basically just in uh, how versatile the Pro Q3 is because it has a solo section so you can solo uh, specific frequency ranges as uh, as far as I know you cannot do that in uh, in the Logic EQ and uh, and also the Pro Q3 has dynamic EQ so you can actually turn it into a dynamics processor as well and the channel EQ does not have that at, as well, uh, either. However, the channel EQ in Logic is great for uh, a lot of different things. I tend to use it if I just need to do tiny little boosts or cuts and it's just on the channel already. If I don't need any character, uh, it's fine. However, what bothers me the most about this channel EQ is the fact that it doesn't seem like I can use, oh, well, I can use the command button to uh, do that, so that uh, does work. Is I'm learning of uh, right now. Seems like uh, seems like I could have used that uh, knowledge uh, quite a lot, <laughs> quite a bit before that. But uh, as far uh, as someone who uses Logic a lot, I am kind of pretty dumb when it comes to Logic. But it does allow you to use um, shortcut keys like this, uh, and there are f uh, quite a few bands, but the fab filter has a lot more bands it's you know i don't even know how many bands they have and they also have like uh you can add dynamics like that with uh with option and then with control you just control the bandwidth like that but one of the things that i like a lot about the pro q3 is the uh mid side eq mode because if i want to create an eq pocket for the vocals for instance I can decide to just take uh, some frequency information out of the out of the mids or out of the center of the signal uh, of an instrument bus, for instance, to give this pocket to the vocal instead of uh, so that it's not clashing here. I can add um, I can add let's see here. I can add a boost in the sides, for instance, if I want to have electric guitars that are panned hard left and hard right. I can give them additional presence by boosting that in the sides. It makes the mix wider. And I can also, as you previously shown, I can uh, take some of the bass information uh, out of the side so that it's only in the center of the signal or in the mids, in the mid of the mid side. One of the things I really like the, about the Pro-Q3, especially when you're mastering, is this function right here to full screen it completely because it'll give you so much, uh, in, uh, it's just like a lot more interesting to do, uh, to use, uh, and you can get really surgical and really nitty gritty. Uh, so that's super convenient. However, if all you got are stock plugins, 
don't underestimate them. Don't think that you need all the new fancy plugins that are out there, even though they might be great. Uh, I would recommend that you learn how to use all of the stock plugins in your DAW, whether you're using Logic, uh, Studio One, Pro Tools, whatever, uh, Reaper. Uh, now I feel compelled to name all of the DAWs so the people look mad at me. <laughs> and uh, so make sure that you do learn how to use your stock plugins because once you learn how to use your stock plugins, you just simply become a better engineer. You know how to use the processors at your disposal and you can upgrade from there. For instance, I really love the compressors in Logic because there's a lot of different types of them and you can sort of click through them and get uh, different sounds. So if you don't have an 1176, you can use the Studio Fenton Logic. If you don't have a Focusrite Red, which I believe this is based on, you can, ha you can use th this one and then if you don't have an LA-2A, you can use this one and it even gives you way more functionality than a traditional LA-2A does uh, because um, the, opto compressor, uh, the optical compression on the LA-2A just has gain reduction, basically. So there is no ratio or anything like that. So this is actually more versatile, although it might not sound exactly the same as a true LA-2A, but it might get you close. And most importantly, it'll help you understand how compression works. Just twist the knobs uh, and, help, and have fun with it. All right, hope that was helpful. I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into um, what EQs I use. And uh, obviously I use more EQs than just these two, but uh, these are sort of the main differences between these two visual EQs. And, that, and uh, I like using them for different purposes, uh, predominantly for filtering and easy, simple boosts. For instance, in the bass here, I just have a permanent a boost and a filter and a boost in the parallel bass chain. And then I modify this accordingly to whatever the signal is going into this. But also one of the beauties of having a mix template, because once you've set all this stuff up, it will enable you to mix a lot faster so you can get better mixes in less time. So I hope that was helpful. Hope it shed some light on EQing or EQ plugins in general. Once again, I'm Bjork Vim from Audio Issues. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember to use your ears.